This video is sponsored by Mubi. Mubi is an online curated cinema. Get your free trial today at mubi.com slash Thomas Flight. As VFX tech makes stitching multiple shots together much easier, long takes, or at least sequences that have the appearance of being a long take, are gaining in popularity. Whether it's entire films shot using this technique like Birdman or 1917, or just the longer sequences found in Spectre, The Revenant, Mission Impossible Fallout, and others, the boundaries of what's possible with this technique are being pushed to new levels. Netflix's new Chris Hemsworth action flick Extraction is yet another film that pushes the boundaries of what's possible with these kinds of sequences. Midway through the film, there's an absolutely insane 12 minute sequence. It starts here, go, 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 go. proceeds to a car chase, moves into buildings, jumps across buildings, falls out of buildings into the street, and continues into another car chase. All without a visible cut. But what makes this technique a gimmick? And what makes it a serious tool for filmmakers to use to tell their stories? Why use a long take, or the illusion of one? Why do something that is theoretically more difficult and complicated, and that doesn't give you flexibility in the editing room? There are two ways to understand the potential benefit of a long take in film. Sometimes long takes are used to enhance the realism of the scene. Cuts can be used to obscure weak choreography or swap between stunt actors and regular actors. When you don't cut, there's nowhere for performers to hide. Sometimes though, not cutting is more of a formalist choice. The long take isn't being used to make things more realistic, but in concert with other aspects of filmmaking to generate a feeling, emotion, or effect that helps tell the story. The famous Steadicam shot that snakes its way through a restaurant in Goodfellas isn't done to make the scene feel more realistic, but to invoke the feeling of importance and grandiosity that the characters feel. Let's take a closer look at these two approaches and where extraction fits into this. The explanation for why not cutting enhances realism is usually this. The viewer subconsciously perceives a cut as artifice. Even if it doesn't register consciously, on some level a cut breaks immersion. By not cutting things, we get the sense that what's happening is more real and less manipulated by the filmmakers. This idea holds some truth, but if realism is your goal, you have to balance not cutting against other things that also break immersion and create a sense of artifice. And I think to a certain extent, the idea that editing inherently breaks immersion is a little bit flawed. Here's an example. One of my favorite long takes is this one from Children of Men. It's about the same length as the one from Extraction. It's incredibly tense and complex. As each additional minute passes without a cut, you become more tense and immersed in the scene. Recently, I was watching this film with my brothers. While we were watching it, we got about halfway through the scene and one of them said, is this still the same shot? It took about four or five minutes for them to realize there were no cuts, but that's good. When realism is the goal, you don't wanna notice the technique, but the shot ends here and the scene returns to a normal pattern of editing. A few minutes and a bunch of cuts later, the same brother said, wait, have they still not cut? My brother was so immersed in the scene that he didn't notice when the cuts resumed. In other words, the return of editing didn't suddenly break his immersion. When we are immersed in a film that's well edited, our minds are seeing the images as a continuous stream, regardless of whether there's editing. Well, only a human. This shot from Steve McQueen's Hunger holds for an incredible 17 minutes. Well, like I Business of the soul. It's a stunning shot and the lack of editing causes you to hang on every word and every silence. But when McQueen does finally decide to cut, you're not suddenly snapped out of the moment. You've been the great door. And Donegal. Hi. The eventual edit advances the emotion of the scene. It doesn't break it. Oh, no. jump, jump, jump. So let's return to the scene from extraction. Oh, no. 
Does this scene build tension and immersion by enhancing realism? I think the answer is somewhat. This is obviously subjective because immersion is a subjective experience, but it's still worth talking about and trying to identify why something might be more or less immersive for a majority of viewers. There are many moments during the scene where the lack of editing is very effective. It builds tension and suspense and heightens the realism of the scene. These moments of action are compelling, exciting, and interesting to watch. But the transitions between these larger portions of action are where things start to get a little questionable for me. Some of these transitions between shots are obviously fake or physically impossible, and sometimes the position and composition of the camera only makes sense because they needed a place to hide the cut. These things break immersion and create a sense of artifice for me as much as or sometimes more than a cut would. One of the benefits of a cut is that while it might on some level create a subtle sense of artifice, audiences are so used to seeing cuts that they're much more blind to a cut than they are other kinds of trickery. This is where the benefit of the real long take becomes clear when using a long take for realism. This long shot from Children of Men is a genuine long take and I think it fits well within the realist style of the film. The entire two and a half hour film Victoria is truly a single take. That's so stuck, hey? I have to go, guys. Have Where you go? go? Where you go? I have to open the cafe now. There are differences between these long takes and the ones we see in Extraction and 1917 when it comes to realism. For one thing, in true long takes, there are no noticeable digital transitions or physically impossible camera movements. The movement of the camera feels real because it is. But the other benefit of a true long take is that I think it gives the performances an energy that we can pick up on subconsciously. In Victoria, there's a tension that rises as the film goes on, not just because there are no cuts, but because the performers literally can't make a mistake. There are real stakes in the production, just like there are stakes in the film, and I think we can perceive that in what's on screen. For scenes that are artificially stitched, we lose the real tension that adds to the on-screen tension. I think there's a potential for artificial long takes to have the same effect as true long takes when it comes to realism, but I think until VFX stitching is good enough to be truly invisible, filmmakers should be very careful of how they use this technique. but completely invisible filmmaking and total immersion aren't always the goal. Maybe for extraction, realism wasn't the motivation behind doing a long take. But if the motivation for using this technique in extraction isn't realism, we have to ask what the motivation is. For a film like Birdman, the purpose of the continuous take is not to build tension and enhance realism, but actually to stylistically elevate the film beyond reality. It's used because it's unrealistic. For Birdman, the surreal nature of the style fits the surreal nature of the story. Season 3 of Mr. Robot features an entire episode that takes place as a single take, but the technique is used to enhance a strange feeling that Elliot, the main character, is having. Something isn't right. Like something slipped away from me. What is it? I can't put my finger on it. What am I even doing here? And within a show that frequently breaks the fourth wall. Help me figure this out. Do not leave me. Stay focused. A filmmaking technique that draws attention to itself doesn't harm the story. I think the big problem the sequence from Extraction runs into is that it awkwardly sits between these two approaches. Is the camera a documentary style camera that has to jump from building to building and shakes as if it's being handled by a person? Or is it a disembodied orb that can float through glass and in front of cars? If the goal is realism, moments like this seem to run counter to that goal. For extraction, if this is just being done as a stylistic choice, does it fit within the film as a whole and is it motivated by the scene? I think it's particularly telling that in other scenes, the filmmakers use a well-executed but fairly generic, fast-cutting style with handheld camera work. This long scene isn't part of a larger commitment to longer takes in general within the film, it just kind of sits on its own. The smaller sections of uncut action within this longer scene are great, they're impressive, well choreographed, 
moments like this one definitely benefit from the lack of editing. But what is really gained by not cutting between these larger sections like here, here, or here? Aside from the ability to say, hey, we have this 12 minute one take sequence. I'm not saying you couldn't mix formalist and realistic approaches to a long take together. But in this scene, switching between the two doesn't seem motivated by story or emotion. It just seems done purely to maintain the effect. I'm not going to say filmmakers should never just show off for fun, but if you're going to do something bombastic and showy just for the fun of it, it might work better within a film that has a more fun bombastic style or story overall. The goal of this video is seriously not to dunk on extraction and the hard work that was put into this sequence. If anything, this is the most interesting part of the film, and I like that filmmakers are experimenting with what's possible with artificial long takes. But I think as they do, it's valuable to discuss what works and what doesn't. I think Extraction's use of this technique showcases both how this technique can be used effectively and how it can go wrong. And I'm more concerned with the attitude this trend creates towards editing. It's not editing itself that inherently pulls you out of the story, it's bad editing. Every cut and composition needs to be intentional. And choosing when not to cut is just as much of an editing decision as choosing when to cut. And like every cut, every decision not to cut should be done in service of the story, whether you're trying to enhance realism or create a certain effect or emotion, not just to use a certain technique for the sake of doing it. Hollywood directors who use long takes tend to get all the buzz, but a lot of the most interesting longer takes I've seen in cinema come from international, classic, or independent film. It's one of the reasons if you're interested in filmmaking, you need to explore more than just what's in Hollywood. And if you're interested in doing that, a great place to find stuff outside the Hollywood bubble is Mubi. When you sign up for your extended 30-day free trial, you'll get access to a new film every day. You can go to mubi.com slash Thomas Flight to sign up for your extended free trial. That's mubi.com slash Thomas Flight for your free trial. Thanks again to Mubi for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching. I want to thank my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in supporting my channel via Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash Thomas Flight. I do a podcast and bonus videos that you can get depending on the level of your support.